What is going on everybody? KJ Wiggums back with another episode on Westby, Wisconsin. This is Saving Pat's Farm. How is everybody doing? Oh, it feels so good to be back. Man, I hope you guys are all doing well. I am not doing too shabby, not gonna lie. We have had a lot of time off from this series. And I have put a lot of time in to these last two episodes, the one before this. Um, in total on that last episode, and I know I didn't have everything in there because I just felt like it was already going really long for a time lapse. Um, it took me two hours to bail everything. It took me almost three hours to wrap everything. And then it took me another two hours to uh, stack everything up. Um, and then on top of that, we have this episode um, where we are getting some corn in the ground. But we are also working on our new area now that we have all of that um, grass cut, baled, wrapped, and stacked. So now it's time to get those fields going over there. If you remember, we're going to be putting some soybean fields in over there, which is why I started corn earlier this year. Uh, usually we do the soybean so we can get the straw and everything off of it because we need that for our food. Um, but I think we'll be all right uh, in that department. And I just needed to you know, get ahead of the game because I know it's going to take quite some time uh, before we're ready to you know, jump over there and get everything going. Um, so I figure over... The next couple days or while we're doing this we will be able to get those fields over there done and get everything moving I'm trying to get this video out this weekend or this week because I am going camping this weekend um, we plan on being up there all day uh, Friday Saturday and Sunday so I won't have a lot of time to record um, so I wanted to get something out for you guys to uh, get you through the weekend. Um, but I think what we're going to do is while I continue to work on this field, we will throw up the first time lapse of this episode of our friend Mark over on the other side of the farm on the new property and check out him getting all of that uh, first field cultivated in and getting that ground ready for us to start planting enjoy the time lapse guys
Alrighty, so that was our biggest field getting plowed in, cultivated in over there. And I have got to say, man, I think that is going, that's going to be the soybean. I'm almost positive that that is at least two of our regular fields that we have on our original 100 acres. So I am super excited about getting these soybeans in and working through all of that and seeing exactly how much we get this year. Well, next year, but how <laughs> when we sell them, we'll harvest them at the end of this year, but we'll sell them at the, uh, what is it, June, I believe we sell soybean. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about that, seeing how much we actually get off of that because a couple of these fields over here are going to be soybean again as well so my hope is that we double what we brought in uh this year <clears throat> excuse me um and then on top of that the soybean straw that we're going to be able to sell a lot of these corn fields we are going to be able to sell the corn stalk bales off of these because they're going to be going in for drying and all of that, so we will get corn stalks. It's not going to be um, for silage this year, so that's going to be nice as well. Definitely going to be a little bit more income on that front as well. Um, we did finish up that first field. We are on our second one, obviously. Um, I don't know how many, I think we'll probably go through today and possibly tomorrow putting corn in. I do got to do some feeding as well and I don't know if you could see that we have some of those alfalfa bales still out there. So I do have to get those collected up and in as well. We are sitting at 1230 so this field should take us to about 2 o'clock or so. And then we will be able to jump into another job. We'll probably, when we go into tomorrow, I'm going to have to do a little bit of feeding. So we'll mix up some ration for them. And then we'll have to collect some bales. So pretty busy episode, getting a lot of stuff done and getting things prepared on here uh, going into the new year. I am still struggling with lime. Um, I'm still hiring people in. We were sitting at closer to $60,000, but I had to hire somebody in to lime all of our fields at the beginning of, uh, or the end of March, uh, and then, you know, got everything cultivated in, all that stuff done. So we are still struggling a little bit there. I'm not getting as much out of my lime because I don't own my own spreader so we are only liming once a year where these fields could do with two I may try to change that up this year and try to lime at the end of the year and then cultivate that in get some fertilizer down and then do another round of lime I think with the amount of silage I got off of there we are going to be a little bit better off money wise I calculated that we should have almost three hundred thousand dollars worth of silage bales that could be sold so we're definitely going to start looking at some new equipment um, finally looking at a lime spreader but I just don't know which one I want to go with yet um, or how big I want to go. Uh, so that, that's still in the works, trying to figure all of that out. Um, but yeah, I mean, things are going nice. It's really good having that extra 100 acres over there. I feel really good about um, the loan payments. You know, we are still up to date on them. We're still sitting at $44,000. We had a buku amount of milk I foresee as we start getting more and more cows uh, over in there that that production piece of things are is just going to pick up. We actually had two loads that we sold yesterday. So that was the majority of our money where, you know, selling the pallets and the milk, or I'm sorry, the butter, uh, the honey and the lettuce, all of that stuff was 
what, I think it came to almost 15,000, so it's working itself out. I think we're probably getting ourselves to a point to where the honey and the butter and all that stuff, we may not have to do that as much anymore. But I think it's something that I want to keep on the farm. I think it's a staple for this generation um, of me taking over the farm from Pap. So we are trying new things. Uh, the stuff Pap was doing just eventually fell through. So I'd, I think I'd like to keep that stuff running just to be on the safe side um, and know that we always have that income there when we need it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back in uh, to another time lapse for the second one of this video. I'm going to continue working on this field and then I will bring you guys back in after that time lapse. So enjoy. So I am not sure what happened to my footage of feeding all of the cows this morning. However, uh, we took care of that. Um, we are on day three of April. Uh, it was getting kind of dark last night. I couldn't see finishing up this field. Uh, so I had to stop. Um, and then this morning I fed the cows, took care of all that. I don't know if I just forgot to hit record or what, but I could not find the footage of taking care of all of those cows. So I spent probably a good 30 minutes um, talking to myself, <laughs> um, just working in that video clip and all of that. So that's all right. All the cows are taken care of. We are wrapping up our last cornfield. Um, for today, I don't think I'm going to get any more corn planted. And we still have one more time lapse. You can see there's a little spot I missed because it was pretty dark out. Um, I got one more time lapse that we have to throw up. We have to get those alfalfa bales picked up and collected as well. There's going to be a little piece. I think I'm just going to let that go. I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Um, have to get all of that stuff brought up and stored in 
the hay shed as well. I think I think it's going pretty well. So far things are pretty nice. And that is wow, we just about ran out of corn. I didn't even take notice to that, so that's pretty pretty good timing. <laughs> um I'm gonna take this down to the container bin. We're gonna do a little bit of work on this. Tractor needs some fuel. I probably will take the um, 4840 down with the Anderson bale trailer and we'll get those bales collected up. I got one more bag of seed left down here until I have to go and do another run for seed so that won't be too bad. And I think I gotta move some milk over to the uh, over to the butter as well. We will we'll just stop that there. See where our butter's at. Yeah, we have three. I bet you our production for butter. Yep, we're gonna go ahead and well, we'll leave that on. Let's go grab the 4840 out of here. We'll hook that up. We gotta get it fired up anyway. Get this fired up. We'll hook up to the tanger here and we'll get some butter moved over or some milk moved over, rather. So that we can start getting some butter. up and running yep lower this down and then what I'll do is I'll go hook up to the Anderson uh, bale trailer I'm not sure where I left that and then I'll get down to the other field and then I'll bring you guys back after this last and final time lapse for the episode trailer hooked up we're gonna head down and grab these alfalfa bales I did stop off and count it's pretty nice um, we have 19 bales left over from last year so that's pretty decent um, the herd is still getting bigger and bigger every day it um, I still gonna move some of these calves out of here it's just there hasn't been a lot of time. Uh, you can see I still got a couple calves 
down in here. They actually just came in overnight. Um, so they are new. So I'll have to check and see if we have any um, any of the calves that turned over to heifers that are ready to go over. I don't think that I do. I've been keeping an eye on that. I'm not really sure which ones, <clears throat> if there's any that are ready to go over. And I don't think that my bulls uh, for my jerseys are ready to move over as of yet either. Um, but again, that is also another, I think it came up to like 275,000, I think is what I did the math on them. Um, so potentially with the bulls uh, for the jersey, because I don't, my... My um, my Holsteins aren't ready. Those bulls won't be ready yet. But for the jerseys and the um, silage bales, we're looking at almost six hundred thousand dollars. Now, the best price for the silage bales aren't until December. So we're not going to see that chunk of money for uh, quite a little bit. But once we do get that, it is going to be a really nice influx at the end of the year. Um, and I'm hoping I can balance that with the bulls. Um, you know, hopefully they'll go towards the middle of the year. And then the silage at the end of the year will be a decent chunk all around uh, for this year. And a good portion of that is also going to go to the loan. Um, so we are going to get a lot of that paid off. Um, but we do have to remember we still have to get a sprayer for lime. And I want to make sure we get that before we pay too much of the loan off. That's going to be... That's going to be a big, big thing for us, um, getting that loan knocked down. Because I think I'm paying almost $7,000 in interest. So if we can knock that down, that's going to be really nice. I've, I've been trying to figure it out. I thought the interest came out as interest for the loan, but there's something that keeps coming up as miscellaneous for $7,000. I don't know quite what that is. I have to look into it. If you guys happen to know off the top of your head if there's something that gets pulled out for miscellaneous, um, let me know. I don't, I'm not leasing any equipment. I am leasing the land, so maybe that's the new lease cost for the land over there, but I don't think that charges per day. I think it charges per month. Let's throw this on here and take a look real quick under the leased equipment, or the leased land. <clears throat> so we're leasing, no, yeah, because it's cost per day, that should only be fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 for that. So that shouldn't come up to that, and I don't know if that comes out in miscellaneous. I don't know, I'll have to run through and just check and see exactly where everything is coming out. probably gonna have to do two trips with this we're gonna fill we're not gonna get everything on here but this is definitely gonna get me through until the next cut um, I don't know if you guys have noticed but we are back on seasons uh, with some help from some people from Schultz Modding's discord uh, I was able to get the um, the growth patterns fixed for alfalfa and clover on here I do not yet have the row crop or the silage corn on here I, I haven't had time um, so it is something I'm still working on if you're interested in helping out if it's something you uh, know how to do and you want to help the channel out and help me out uh, you can get a hold of me on here or get a hold of me on our on my Facebook which is just KJ Wiggums hit me up on there and we can talk about it and you know I could send you the version that I have of the map I am not opposed to, <laughs> to asking for help so 
if there is anybody out there that wants to help let me know um, but I'm gonna get this load up here to the farm and then we'll come down here and we will grab this last load from down here as well all right so we are hitting our last few bales I think we got four more bales to pick up along this line I had a <laughs> I had a little bit of issue up at the farm uh, where I decided to unload the bales. Ended up being very hilly. As you know, our, uh, our farmyard is not perfectly flat. Um, so I ended up having the bales start to roll on me, which was pretty miserable. Um, I don't know. I, I, I almost feel like I need to find a different place to start storing the, the alfalfa bales. Um, at least somewhere flat that I can unload them so they don't roll and go all over the place. Because it really does make it a pain in the butt when it comes time to getting everything picked up and stacked inside the shed. The shed itself inside is flat, but unloading it off of this trailer, it, they always tend to go haywire. And you'll see when we get up there um, what I'm talking about. So I'm not, I'm not too sure what I want to do about that. I know a couple videos ago I had talked about some work that I've done on the farm with regards to adding in a slurry tank. Um, but unfortunately, when I got my new computer, I must have did all that work on my old computer and took the pictures and everything like that on there. And when I brought them over, brought everything over, it must have been something that I missed um, and forgot to bring them. So I don't have those pictures anymore. Um, I don't know. It still might be something I do. And if I do, like when I get down here, I'll show you, but... Pretty much what it is, is where our hay shed is now anyway, I would take that out. Um, and that is where the slurry tank would go. And with that, all of the slurry from the farm, from all, what do we have, four pens? From all four pens would go into that one tank. And I like that idea. I like the idea of being able to have it all in one central location. So when I am, you know, spreading the, you know, the liquid manure around, that we're not having to go to every single husbandry or every pen, whatever you want to call them, um, that we would be able to just go to one central location and pull it all from that. Oh no, I'm not, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do yet. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the alfalfa bales, they all rolled and started going haywire. So, kind of a little bit of an issue with that. We'll leave this here. But basically what would happen is, we would come down here, we take out this shed... We take out the light, the trees. Uh, we'd have to move the water and molasses tanks, and we'd have to move the mineral feed. And then the tank would sit right in here. There'd be a ramp right about here that would drive up to it. And then that's where everything, like the, you know, we would pump everything from here over. We'd have to run lines from all three of these uh, pens here down to it and we would have to work it that way and then I could probably get rid of these areas back here would give a little bit more room to store I think but yeah that's a that's a thought that's a plan I don't know if I'm going to do it um, cause I haven't quite figured out, I had in the pictures that I did, I had the mineral feed and the molasses tank. They ended up in this field or this little pasture, whatever you want to call it here. And we kind of flattened everything out, smoothed it out, reworked it. And they worked pretty good. Um, 
I think I also put a shed down somewhere in here uh, that would take the place of the the hay shed. Uh, but there's, you know, I still have this opening down here as well where these trees are that we could possibly put a shed right in here too. But then that just keeps everything so far away and I like keeping things as close as possible. But I don't know. Thank you, buddy. So here is our new area. These are our new fields that we had cultivated in. Um, I went through and painted in the lines all the way around so it actually separates them from fields. I did not go in and paint anything yet, so I still got to do that. I added in these roads along here. Uh, they're not the smoothest, but they help us get in and out as well. Um, we have this one up here, and this road here goes all the way down and where you come up into these fields originally way down there um, this road runs the whole top of this piece to bring you down to these fields here i figured that would be nice in case we're down this end and we get full uh, when loading we can always just come down here and take off i added in another road also right over here and this is to our barley field and I figured this would be pretty nice instead of having to go all the way down there to start harvest you know we could just pop in here and start working this way it gives us another area to come in and out of always expanding always thinking of something different that we can do in here and then down here I know I had the uh, thumbnail for the time lapse for bailing this field up but these are all of our silage bales down here 290 bales we have stacked all the way along here and I am super excited I can't wait to to December to when I can get all of these sold this is going to be a very, very hefty income that <laughs> the farm desperately needs. Um, super excited about that. So, but yeah, that's everything we have going on right now. I am going to wrap this one up here because I have to start getting everything packed for my camping trip this weekend. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any other ideas of things that we can do on here, um, always love talking to you guys. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start getting all of the alfalfa bales stacked up in the shed, and then I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy farming.